On this edition of Shelby This Week, Shelby Township lands on the top of another list. We visit with Doug Wozniak in his Lansing office. And a new event in Shelby Township will get you and your family in the summer spirit. We have all these stories and more on this edition of Shelby This Week. The Shelby Township Police Department needs your help in locating a suspect. Police say a man robbed the Huntington Bank on 24 Mile in Hayes. The man fled the scene on foot, according to the department. Police brought out the canine and tracked the man to 24 Mile in Chanel Lane, where they suspect he escaped in a vehicle believed to be a white Sprinter van. The man is described as being about 6 feet 2 inches tall, over 300 pounds. He was wearing glasses, a blue jacket, and a knit cap. Police say he is the same suspect that robbed a Chase Bank in Chesterfield. If you have any information, you are asked to call the Shelby Township Police Department at 586-731-2121. It's another list and Shelby Township finds themselves on top. Niche.com placed the community in its number one spot as the best place to live in Macomb County. The website also found the township to be the number one place to raise a family in Macomb County. The 2019 Best Places to Live ranking provides an assessment of the overall livability in the area. Several key factors are calculated to land on the list like quality of schools, housing trends, overall access to amenities, and crime rates in the area. These rankings come on the heels of Shelby Township ranked as safest community in Macomb County. To see the complete list of best places to live, visit niche.com. He served for 10 years as a Shelby Township trustee, and now a state representative, Doug Wozniak, is up in Lansing working for the people in our district. There's a picture of the district. That's everyone that you have in your... Yeah. Okay. So it goes down to, here's 26 mile, 25, 24, 23 mile right there. Okay. So the district goes down to... Representing the 36th district, Doug Wozniak finds himself very busy the these days miles. in the state's capital. So this long hallway um, has all the offices that face the Capitol building when it comes to putting together bills or any type of legislation, uh, immediate contact is important so that we don't have to go running around all over. So we've got all the floors here with just every rep. Hi, how are you? Good. Our offices. This is the walkway that connects two buildings and uh, was very uh, ingenuitive to uh, put the two buildings together. Every single day, Representative Wozniak no, will meet beneficial. with the other reps um, from all across the state and discuss bills. And since he's taken this seat, a oh, lot yeah. has already happened in Lansing. I'll tell you, a lot of bills have come up in the House, 300, matter of fact, in the last three months. So we've got a lot of work to do, but what I've been doing for Shelby is looking at ways that we can get grants and more money coming back into Shelby. Right, I already have some bills in with, uh, that are concerned with elder abuse and the penalties for elder abuse, vulnerable adults, uh, the penalties for that, and making it such that uh, reimbursement to the victim is first before any fines are paid. And also that relatives, not just non-relatives, could also be found liable for abusing an elder. Matter of fact, that's when it happens a lot. Uh, we also have some gun bills in legislation uh, those would be coming up soon. Uh, we've got uh, another bill to eliminate lame duck, so the session would aim, uh, end on election day, and there would be no session until the new legislature came in. As Wozniak keeps very busy in Lansing working for the community, he certainly will always have Shelby Township here. on and his mind. Make sure that I feel that we can Shelby really do good things here in Lansing. You know, most of the time I've always thought that uh, so people that come up here kind of forget yeah. who they are and who they're working for. That's going to be my mantra, is to make sure that we keep working for Shelby Township, Washington, Bruce, Romeo, the whole county of Macomb, 
and make sure that we're going to do things that make sense for our area. Representative Wozniak stresses the importance of staying in contact with him. He is available for office hours in Lansing. You can call his office directly at 517-373-0843 or email Douglas Wozniak at house.mi.gov. He will hold his coffee hours right here in Shelby Township on March 18th from 12 p.m. until 2 p.m. at his district office, which is located at 51543 Van Dyke Road. If you are musically inclined, now is your time to shine in the spotlight. Shelby Township is offering an opportunity for you to showcase your talents on the stage. The township is hosting the first ever Shelby Spotlight competition. Finalists will have the chance to perform live during the 2019 State of Shelby Township Address, where people from the audience will cast their votes for their favorite acts. From there, winners will be selected. The grand prize is $500 and a music video produced by Shelby TV. The second place winner will get $250 and the third place will receive $100. To audition, you must live, work, or attend school in Shelby Township. Auditioners can also be a student within the Utica Community School District, or you can even t be taking lessons in the township. Contestants must be at least 12 years old. Auditions will be held on April 6. Musical acts will be asked to return for the final round at the State of the Township on July 19. To fill out an entry form, visit shelbytwp.org spotlight. All forms must be submitted by 9 p.m. on March 31st. For the first time ever, Shelby Township is getting ready to say hello to summer in a grand way. A summer kickoff will be on Thursday, May 30th from 4.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's going to be a fun event for everybody. There will be things for the family, for the kids, for the parents. It's just a great way to kind of get in that summer mood and kind of break away from the end of school. I know kids start to get a little restless when that time of year comes, so it will be a fun way for everybody to just kind of hang out, have a fun time, a relaxing time, and just kick off the summer. There will be food trucks, live music, kid activities, and an outdoor movie. And as a resident, you have the chance to actually help pick what movie is shown on the screen. Shelby Township is asking people to vote for the movie they want to see. Movies like Ralph Breaks the Internet, Incredibles 2, and Tangled are on the list. You can vote from now until March 31st. The big announcement will be made on April 1st. To cast your vote, visit the Facebook event page at Shelby Township Summer Kickoff. This event will be put on with the Sterling Heights Regional Chamber of Commerce. Be sure to mark your calendar for May 30th. Still ahead on Shelby this week, a new piece of technology is enhancing the way the Shelby Township Police Department does their job. Several former Red Wing players took to the ice for this annual event. Stay with us for more Shelby This Week. The men and women who served in our military make a terrific asset to any business or workplace that hires them as a civilian. So if you're an employer or business owner, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. It's also a great way to thank them for their service. To learn more, call this number or visit saluteheroes.org. The Utica girls basketball team went head-to-head -head with Troy in the playoff game on Friday. And these girls played hard on the court to bring home a very sweet victory. Andrew Stowski has your game highlights. District Finals in girls basketball as Utica takes on the Troy Colts. Nisha Bargava knocking down a long two-pointer. Then Utica gets started. Rachel Whitehead. The ball hangs on the rim for a second and finally falls. She had 13 points. 
then in the paint, Ashley Lagodzinski. Filling it up with two of her five. Now some defense. Lena Rea stepping in front of this one and knocking it down for two. And Utica was out to a 17 to nine lead. But the Troy Colts would not let up. Emily Olsen with an easy layup here. And Raya Chakravanti with a steal here into the fast break. Count it. And we're all tied up at the half, 20 to 20. Now in the second half, Athena Sampson. She was the Colts' top scorer with 15. Nice give and go here. Down low to Kendall Zeiter. Lindsey Michael for the Utica Chieftains, knocking down a long two points. And Madison Barch with a triple. Kaylee Ebling with a fadeaway jumper. Knocks it down and one. She had 14. But now the Troy Colts answer back. Emily Olsen knocking down three points. Jessica Chen with the steal. Down the court, the bucket and the foul. But Kaylee Ebling answers back at the other end. Kendall Zeiter. Knocking down a three late. But within the last minute of the play, Rachel Whitehead. Two points, and at the end of regulation, we're all tied up at 46. We're headed to overtime. And into the extra period, Rachel Whitehead gets a fortunate bounce off the high glass. And Kaylee Ebling getting fouled and knocks down both of her shots. Lena Rea splitting defenders over to Monet Knowles, off the glass and in. Troy would foul late, but Utica would hit their free throws, and Utica would go on to win their first district title in 19 years. Final score, Utica 55, Troy Colts 48. Utica will play Lakeview in the regional semifinals at Dakota High School Monday at 7 p.m. after we won one in 2000 that we'd wait quite this long, but a lot of circumstances, but it makes this even sweeter waiting that long. It's just, and it's just a tremendous group of kids who deserve this because they do everything right. Yeah, the, Kaylee's, you know, senior, been with us for three years, you know, always does that, made big shots, made big free throws. Just proud of our kids and, and proud of Utica High School. The Shelby Township Police Department is leading the charge with new technologies. Stacey Sansatera tells us how this equipment is helping officers with their jobs. Today is a two-day training for the Macomb Area Crash Group for Reconstructionists. We get together about every quarter. Uh, this day is a special day because it's a two-day training where we're talking about all the different technologies, whether it be the Faro uh, technology that we currently have just upgraded to. Advancements in technology have been a blessing for law enforcement. The Shelby Township Police Department recently purchased a Faro 3D laser scanner, which provides the department a portable way to capture accurate details from the scene of an accident or crime scene. This technology has improved investigations and helps to better serve the community. It's a huge game changer. Going back to my days in traffic when I started in 98 in the traffic unit, we were still using measuring tape. So you had to set out a grid pattern. And you can only imagine if we have a crash scene on an M53 and 23 mile road, if we have to grid pattern with using tape and measuring from one item to another item, not only are we going to have the roadway closed for probably six hours, if that was the case, the manpower it takes, it takes an additional manpower. With this new ferro system, we can decrease that time dramatically and get a much better product. 
A picture may be worth a thousand words, but crime scene mapping using 3D laser scanners provides context, accuracy, and speed. Uh, Feral Systems not only taking the laser measurements, it's taking photos at the same time. So we can get that 3D, 3D rendering of that case, so when we present that case in court, it's a much better product that we're able to present to the jury. The Faro takes a three-dimensional scan of an accident or crime scene. Once the data is downloaded, all the separate scans can be stitched together to create a 3D model or reenactment of a scene. The 3D scanner records more points of measurement than any other traditional measurement technique, and the benefits are huge. The way Faro works is it goes out there and it shoots a bunch of photographs and it puts it into something like a virtual room that gives us the ability to take measurements even after we leave the scene. So if there's something we might have missed, uh, we can go back out, we can open a program up, um, measure from point to point or from, for vehicles, for certain scenes, indoor, outdoor. Not only is it better for our citizens, it's better for our officers. If we can keep the roadways open, if we can actually create a great product when we're doing crime scene investigation for our evidence techs to, presume, to present that great case in court, it makes us look better. We want, we want to set the example, and we are setting the example, for law enforcement excellence in Macomb County. So that's what we always strive to do every single day. For Shelby This Week, I'm Stacy Sansaterra. To learn more about Faro and other technologies in policing, be sure to check out the next episode of Straight Talk. Skate for Sobriety took over Hockeyland in Frazier and some special guests hit the ice were former Red Wing players. Kyle Warzabach tells us how this event was used to raise money for an organization right here in Macomb County. While the Red Wings alumni and Families Against Narcotics were opponents on the ice at this charity hockey game, both teamed up to raise money for Hope Not Handcuffs, an initiative that gives those struggling with opioid addiction a second chance. So Hope Not Handcuffs is an initiative we started on February 1st of 2017. It was to bridge that gap into people looking to get into treatment. Uh, so simply what it is is someone could either walk into a police station that is participating with us or fill out an online assessment. Uh, they are then uh, greeted by uh, an angel that we have, a volunteer angel, that comes out and uh, helps them get into treatment. Since then, uh, February 1st of 2017, we've placed 2,500 people into treatment. Participating in the game was local comedian Dave Coulier, and he wants people to know that this opioid crisis is no joke. Well, you know there's a huge crisis all across the United States, and so um, if we can just make a little dent and help some people out by playing a hockey game, um, then we feel really good about that. About 44% of Americans know someone who has been addicted to opioids, and Dave is no exception. I've had, uh, I've had friends that were very addicted, um, some people that were not only family members but very close friends. I've lost friends. And so I think now that it's being exposed the way it is in the media, uh, I think that uh, that's a great thing to be able to open this, this subject up for, for people to really be able to address in a, in a better way. Robert Skelton has been sober for two years now, and he wants to pass his message along to those who are struggling. Well, me being young, 24 years old, I really wish I would have got sober at, let's say, 20. You know, it's, it's better to get a jump on it and admit your faults before it gets out of hand and, you know, you end up hurting someone. When dealing with, you know, a son or a daughter in, in recovery, it, it's good to be patient. It's good to work alongside of them. You know, you don't want to enable them, but at the same time, you've you got to give them some harsh love and get them on the right path. You've got to guide them in the right direction. But in the end, the event was all about having fun, and these guys had much to look forward to, to a varying degree. Last year, I know I, I spoke with Redmond quite a bit and McCarty, so uh, I'm looking forward to getting on the ice and, and chirping at him a little bit. So. Getting back to the bench, that's, that's my goal, is I go out and then I'm like, I hope I can just make it back to the bench. For Shelby This Week, I'm Kyle Warzabach. One business owner has a brand which encourages women empowerment and celebrates the fierceness in us all. It started with my, as my, in my husband's class with women's boxing. Um, one, of the, one of the girls, she said that we are coaches pretty weapons and it just kind of stuck and I wanted to do something with that. Pretty Weapon brand is a perfect fit for people who work out at New Way Martial Arts and quite frankly anyone who considers themselves fierce and confident. Izzy started the brand last summer in hopes it will continue to grow with this idea in mind. My goal with the brand is not just 
be a symbolic, you know, symbolic of, of uh, empowerment, um, of strength and, fear and fierceness, but I want to do charities, you know, so my, my main focus is towards um, sex trafficking awareness and prevention. So that's what all my charities, events that I have organized with Pretty Weapon Brand, that's what the, the focus is all about. Men and women are encouraged by Izzy to rock the logo. While the main message is about fierceness, Izzy hopes people will always remember this. You can be fierce, but be caring and giving at the same time, you know. So maybe, yes, you're good grappler, good boxer, um, you know, you're fierce in whatever sports you are involved in or whatever, you know, it is shooting, racing, horse riding you still make time for helping others. For anyone interested in purchasing the apparel, you can visit New Way Martial Arts on Van Dyke in Shelby Township or visit prettyweaponbrand.com. One, two, three. A new Shelby Township business opened their doors in August, and now they are official members of the Shelby Township community with their recent ribbon cutting. The Poor House offers customers an upscale bar feel. The owners of the location felt the community needed somewhere to go for food and drinks. They have over 70 craft beers on tap, along with an extensive selection of premium wine and spirits. With the full bar, they also have food. They serve lunch and dinner. Coming up next on Shelby This Week, people experience an up-close encounter with exotic animals at the Nature Center. Anyone who stopped by the Nature Center on Saturday was greeted with animals, but not the usual ones you find at the center. Exotic Animal Day brought out naturalist Randy Baker from Naturalist Endeavors, along with Amanda Flauk from Night Nature Alliance. Guests had the opportunity to do a meet and greet and say hello to the animals and ask the experts questions. Several of the animals are difficult to see for yourself up close, but on this particular day, all the animals were ready for the visitors. At 5.58 p.m. on March 20th, we will officially welcome spring. And with warmer weather on the horizon, why not celebrate on that day with some ice cream? Dairy Queen's free cone day will happen all day on Wednesday, March 20th. Each customer will get a small vanilla cone, no purchase necessary. While you are at the store grabbing your ice cream, there will be an opportunity for you to donate to Children's Miracle Network. Since 1984, more than $110 million has been raised for the hospitals on Cone Day. That's all we have for this edition of Shelby This Week. Remember, you can always watch us online or on Facebook. Just search Shelby TV. We will leave you now with dogs and cats available for adoption at the Humane Society of Macomb. Enjoy and thanks for watching.